Kingdom Blessings. I'm Pastor Sheila. Are you ready to be blessed, revived, and refreshed? Well, it's time for Moed Shel Raga, the appointed time of refreshing. Come on, let's prepare our hearts and our minds for the Word of God. from Romans chapter 3 verses 21 to 26 and I'm reading from the Life Application Study Bible. It says, but now God has shown us a different way of being right in his sight, not by obeying the law, but by the way promised in the scriptures long ago. We are made right in God's sight when we trust in Jesus Christ to take away our sins. And we all can be saved in this same way, no matter who we are or what we have done. For all have sinned, all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet, now God in his gracious kindness declares us not guilty. He has done this through Christ Jesus, who has freed us by taking away our sins. For God sent Jesus to take the punishment for our sins and to satisfy God's anger against us. We are made right with God when we believe that Jesus shed his blood, sacrificing his life for us. God was being entirely fair and just when he did not punish those who sinned in former times. And he is entirely fair and just in this present time. When he declares sinners to be right in his sight because they believe in Jesus. Hallelujah. My dear brothers and sisters, here Paul is giving us the wonderful news. There is a way to be declared not guilty by trusting Jesus Christ to take away our sins. Trusting means putting our confidence in Christ to forgive our sins, to make us right with God, and to empower us to live the way he taught us. God's solution is available to all of us, regardless of our background or past behavior. Some sins seem bigger than others because their obvious consequences are much more serious. Murder, for example, seems to, to us to be worse than hatred. And adultery seems worse than pride. But this does not mean that because we only commit little sins, we deserve eternal life. All sins make us sinners. And all sins cut us off from our holy God. All sins therefore lead to death because they disqualify us from living with God. Regardless of how great or small they seem, don't minimize little sins or overrate big sins. They all separate us from God, but they all can be forgiven. 
Paul explains that God declares us not guilty. When a judge in a court of law declares the defendant not guilty, all the charges are removed from his record. Legally, it is as if that person had never been accused. When God forgives our sins, our record is wiped clean. From his perspective, it is as though we had never sinned. Christ set sinners free from slavery to sin. In Old Testament times, a person's debts could result in his being sold as a slave. The next of kin could redeem him by his freedom. Christ purchased our freedom and the price was his life. Christ died in our place for our sins. God is justifiably angry at sinners. They have rebelled against them and cut themselves off from his life-given power. But God declares Christ's death to be the appropriate designated sacrifice for our sin. Christ then stands in our place, having paid the penalty of death for our sin, and he completely satisfies God's demands. My dearly beloved, my dear brothers and sisters, sons and daughters of Christ, hallelujah. What wonderful news it is to be reminded that we are declared not guilty. Yes, we were guilty. Yeah, maybe they didn't catch you, but God sees everything. We were guilty, shaped in iniquity. Even in our mother's womb, we are guilty. But thanks be unto God who giveth us the victory. While we were yet sinners, he sent his son to die for us. And because Jesus Christ paid the price for us, he paid the penalty, the debt that we could never pay. He was the perfect sacrifice and he paid it for us. He hung on the cross for us. And because he did that, God declares us not guilty. We were guilty, but he said not guilty. And it's just as if we never sinned. Isn't that awesome? I always stand in amazement when I think about God and how God is immutable and he doesn't forget anything. But yet our God chooses to forget. He chooses to have amnesia when we ask for forgiveness and we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior. He forgives us. He forgives us. He casts our sins away from us, far away, as far as the east is from the west, and he remembers them no more. That's what the word says. He gets amnesia. That's right. It doesn't matter if you killed somebody, if you lied, if you cheated, if you committed adultery, fornication. It, it doesn't matter. You got pregnant out of wedlock. It does not matter if you confess your fault before the Lord. He is faithful and he is just to forgive. He said, come boldly before the throne of grace there to obtain mercy in the time of need. Are you in need of being pardoned? Well, the Lord is ready to do that if you are ready to repent, to tell him, Lord, I'm, I'm really sorry for what I've done. Forgive me, wash me, purge me, cleanse me. And he will do just that. Why don't you do it before it's too late? Listen, backslider, it's not too late for you. You could come back home. Those of you under the sound of my voice, if you have never accepted the, the work of the cross, you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, now's a good time. As a matter of fact, this, this is the season that we are celebrating what Jesus Christ did at the cross for us. It's so awesome that we were wretched undone but Jesus Christ died for us they, it, that's awesome that he gave us another chance he's a God of second chance and third chance and fourth chance we don't want to take God's grace for granted but thanks be unto God who gives us the victory and once we receive his spirit he's always going to make a way of escape for us if we lean and depend on him alright come on I could talk about 
my God forever because I am excited about what he's done on the cross for us. We can walk with our heads up high, not that we did it, but because our father loved us so much that he brought us back unto himself. He devised the plan, even when he knew we would mess up. But we can always come and ask for forgiveness. So come on, let's go before the Lord and thank him for the opportunity to become sons of God, to be new creatures. All things are passed away and behold, all things become new when we are in Christ Jesus. And he who the Son sets free, hallelujah, is free indeed. So come on, let's pray. Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come just so happy thanking you and praising you glorifying your name because you are so good you are so gracious you are so merciful oh god thank you we enter into your courts with praise we are thankful unto you and we bless your name father thank you thank you for the work of the cross thank you for the plan that you designed for us thank you that you have good thoughts for us and father we ask that you would purchase us with hyssop wash us in your blood lord god cleanse us create within us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us father we just want to say thank you thank you for sending jesus christ to die for us and give us an example of living a true pure and holy life here on this earth thank you lord that you will receive us one day again thank you lord we thank you we give you the glory we give you the honor we give you the praise lord we are so thankful unto you thank you jesus Thank you, Lord. We are so grateful unto you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, you're so wonderful, God. You're so wonderful, God. You're so wonderful, God. You're so wonderful. You're so wonderful. We thank you for all that you've done for us. We thank you. Hallelujah for how Jesus Christ died on the cross. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for inhabiting us and using us as temples of the, the living God, giving us such a privilege and an honor to house the Holy Spirit within inside of us. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for Calvary. Thank you for giving us another chance. Thank you for making us somebody. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. That even when others walked away, Lord, you saw who we could be. Even when we were in the junk pile of life, even when we didn't even deserve your love or your mercy, God, you never gave up on us. And for this, we say thank you. Thank you. Father, we repent and we say, Father, work on us. You are the potter and we are the clay. Mold us, make us, and shape us. Break us, take out every mark, every blemish, every stain, Lord. We don't want anything that's not like you. God, we want to make you proud. We crown you as Lord, Master, Savior, and King of our lives. And because you are our King, hallelujah, you are soon to return. We are the kingdom of God. And we thank you for righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. That's your kingdom, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We glorify you. We magnify you. We extol you. You are wonderful. We give you glory and honor. In the mighty, matchless name of Yeshua Amashiach. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Well, beloved, thank you, Lord. We are so happy about what God has done, how Jesus gave his life for us. So I want to encourage you to celebrate resurrection, celebrate freedom and liberty for he whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Well, this has been Moed Shalraga, the appointed time of refreshing. I pray that you've been blessed, revived, refreshed in the presence of the Lord. Shalom.